the theme of vigilance is uh, one of the critical one in understanding how the kingdom of heaven takes place and our entry into it. The parable of the ten virgins shows two different attitudes in regards to uh, the arrival of uh, the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. That's how the relationship in between us and the Lord is meant to be. We are the bride. We are the church. The bridegroom is Jesus Christ. He's coming to our lives, as I also explained yesterday, and he's the one who will be calling us to be with him eternally. And there are two ways of um, living this expectation. One is a fake one, which is only an external demonstration. And the other one is a real one. At first, nothing makes a clear distinction because both the foolish ones and the wise virgins had their lamps. So nothing really indicates that there is a difference. The moment comes in the middle of the night when the call that the bridegroom is coming uh, is being cried out. The Holy Spirit, which is the symbol of uh, uh, oil, is meant to be drawn continuously in our lives so that at the critical moment of our lives, we will not run in wrong directions. You know that it's not so much how we go about uh, even ordinary things in life, which are important, but the critical moments determine what is truly at stake. At that moment, you can see what attitude you have. Let's say, how can you really know if a student studied? The two of them can study. The exam will verify. Then you cannot cheat anyone. In the moments of crisis, in the moments of uh, uh, arrival of the Lord, when really things are getting, you may say, hard, either we have this flame of the Holy Spirit within us or will completely flip. Now you can understand why one of the big question marks of our faith education, of what we are receiving in the church, is a big question mark. A lot of CCDs and classes and talks and reflections and what have you and the Catholic schools, the critical moments, the temptations arrive, boom, people flip. They all of a sudden behave as if they have never gotten to know the, the Lord. And this is a major uh, concern on the part of the bishops, of the educators. What really happened? Well, what happened is very simple. Exteriority, which means going through the motions, going through the religious education, going to the Catholic schools, going to a lot of things, nice and sweet. But the test verified what was actually inside. St. Paul says, what is the will of God for you? Your sanctification. Correct? We heard clearly the sanctification, which connecting with today's gospel means bringing the spirit inside, filling our interior life with a relationship with the Lord, making sure that we avoid, as St. Paul says, what actually impedes this filling in, namely immorality. In other things that he is naming, saying, look, those things really hurt and damage the relationship with the Lord. Be watchful, be attentive, because God wants you to be holy, meaning sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, separated from the ways of the world. If this element does not happen, the critical challenges of our lives, the tests, the temptations will truly verify where we gravitate towards. You know that in the moments of the trial, everybody will run 
where we always think happiness has been for us. That's scary. Because we live and apparently there is no distinction when the Lord says, now I'm arriving. As I explained, there is also a moment of panic. What am I going to do? How am I going to ask? I'm not prepared. What's actually happening in my life? And this whole running towards the marketplace is actually going where we have always been running towards. But look, there is something scandalous in this gospel because we think Jesus is merciful, right? Of course. So when the five foolish virgins would arrive to the door and knock, the master should have said, welcome. Yes, I've been waiting for you. Absolutely. This is how we would have ended up the parable, right? Exactly. But it doesn't work like that. And this is scandalous thing. Where is this good God here? Where is this all merciful Jesus who should have opened the gates to anyone? Nowhere to be seen. Why? Because the Lord now will say with total clarity, there is no relationship in between two of us. I don't know you. Who are you? We have never known each other. Yeah, you went through a lot of motions behind the scenes. You did your own stuff. In front of the computer, you lived very more life. But there was no relationship. You faked it. No, the door is closed. When I was arriving, I was calling you. You're not ready. How come were you not ready? Excuse me, where were you? Uh, but uh, look, I had other important things to do. Believe it or not, on the other side, there is no politics. No stupid explanation and trying to come out of uh, uh, one's own uh, mistakes. No, sheer truth, which means it was all just a one big lie. On the outside, yeah, we can put on any show. It can be a nice a social club and a relationship with other people based on our friendliness and even our same interests. But the spirit was not there. And the Lord says, no, we don't know each other. I always like to bring this element when once, on few occasions, people said, but we are friends, Father, right? Okay, uh, what, what's my last name? You don't know. What's my preferences of cuisine? You don't know. Do you know my date of birth? Do you know my interest? You don't know. So how can you even call it a friendship? But do you know really what my points of interest are? I have no idea. So please, let's at least be sincere in this. We are no friends. We are people who know each other from the bus stop, but that's about it. But let, let's not make a, um, a kind of an external show. You see, there is no politics here. I remember one pastor here from town, may he rest in peace now, he was laughing at that point because he would say, Oh, Father, uh, we are friends. And he was commenting to someone else, a parishioner. Yeah, I play golf with Father. He says, yeah, right. We played once 10 years ago and we are big players all together. <laughs> it's all a lie. You understand? A lie. But you cannot play double with, with the Lord. He will say, there's no relationship. Because when the moment of crisis arrived, Everybody will go towards something. For example, there are people who will go straight to the bottle, will st run straight to get high. Others in front of the TV. Others will go into despair. There will be still others who will have the Holy Spirit and will know what to do in the moments of darkness. And this is how it all determines. You may say, I love Jesus. So how come you fall apart when the tribulation comes? Aha, because maybe there's no spirit inside. It's all fake at the end. Because if there is the spirit, it should translate itself into a concrete action. If no spirit, then you will say, I love Jesus, but you will run after the world, after the idols. You will go to the marketplace trying supposedly to get some kind of a solution and you will get done. There will be all sheer truth. And I remember to conclude my reflection, 
a concrete example of a parishioner. A very pious person on the outside. When he got sick, look, he denied everything. He got upset, he got angry, he was screaming, he was kicking, he was... Uh, how this good God allows this sickness to me? Because at the end, it was all fake. He didn't have a spirit inside. He had a lot of religiosity. But the moment when the Lord says, I'm coming to your life, which means you have three months of living. What the heck? <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So now you understand you didn't have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit would say, yes, come Lord Jesus. And I could tell you another story of a person whom I met when she found out, I think it was six months she had ahead of her because of the disease. She told the doctor, that wasn't a bad news, doctor. It was a good news. How come? The doctor said, if the eternal life exists, happiness on the other side is present. God is happiness. The doctor was dumbfound because he never met the person who would interpret life in this way. But now you could see there was one who had the spirit of God. The other one was all fake. Let us ask that when the truth of our lives is being tested and the Lord will knock and will say, I'm arriving, we may truly have the, a lamp, but also the oil, the spirit to welcome Jesus Christ.